What's up guys, it's Dave Marshall with the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel and in this video series we're going to help change our RC life by going over all of the different features and functions of the all new Spectrum NX series transmitters. As with all of our videos, everything that you see in the video is available in the links in the description. Uh, those are affiliate links and when you use those it pays a small commission back to the channel and we really appreciate your support. If you like the videos that we're putting out here on the RC Air Marshall YouTube channel be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you never miss another video. Now let's get to today's tutorial. What's up guys in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up the sequencer in your Spectrum NX series radio. To get into the sequencer we're going to first hit the scroll wheel we're going to press that button down and we're going to use the scroll wheel in our function list to go down to the sequencer sequencer which is right here we're going to hit the scroll wheel again and that's going to take us into our main sequencer menu and we have four different sequencers available to us or four different programs that we can work with the first two are basically predefined for us and really are the two main functions that we're going to use with a sequencer most folks are going to be using the sequencer for gear door cycling where they have separate servos and don't really have like a control module or anything like that to control the sequencing of the gear doors and the retracts. So those first two predefined sequences are going to be your door cycle with the wheels, meaning that the doors are going to open, then the retract is going to cycle, and then the door is going to close again. So it's a full cycle of the doors for each sequence. And the second predefined sequencer program here is door basic with a wheel either going up or going down and in this case it'd be where the door opens the wheel retracts and the door stays open after the wheel has come down so that'd be that number two and number three and number four here uh, you see S3A, S3B, that's just sequence 3A, sequence 3B. You can rename those inside those custom program areas. They're not defined by default. So let's take a look at this first predefined program for door cycle and wheels. And we're going to work with that one for the purposes of, you know, kind of seeing how the sequencer works. And you should be able to get a feel for how the number two uh, is going to work as well. It, it's a little easier and then also how to set up your custom ones as well but the one that we're going to work with for the purposes of this video is that first option there uh, where we have uh, the door cycling completely so we're going to set up a sequence for the door to open the retract to come down and then the door close so let's go ahead and use our scroll wheel we're going to roll it and you'll see that first one highlight we're going to go ahead and click on that to open up that uh, that sequencer menu you'll see a lot of options here the first one that we're going to need to do is assign this sequence event to a switch right now the switch is inhibited uh, we're going to go ahead and click the scroll wheel to make that selectable and as with all of the spectrum areas where you can assign a switch you can either use the scroll wheel to assign the switch or you can simply flip the switch that you want to be associated with this sequencer program uh, I want the gear to be on switch A, so I've cycled switch A, and we can see that it has assigned switch A. So we're going to go ahead and click the scroll wheel again to lock that in. The next thing that we're looking at here, we've got forward and reverse. So within the sequencer, you've got two different cycles, right? So one would be your forward cycle or your gear up, gear down cycle, and one would be your reverse cycle. So right now I've got the, uh, with the switch uh, in the gear up position, that is going to be the reverse cycle. And with the switch in the gear down or position zero, that's going to be our forward cycle. And the next thing that we'll look at here is the speed associated with each one of those. And we've got it at five seconds right now. Now, uh, just to be clear, there is a little bit of math involved when you're setting up a sequencer. But for the purposes of this discussion and to make things a little bit easier, uh, we're going to set the speed to four seconds for the forward and reverse cycles. So we've got our speed set to four seconds for each one of those. So that means that the entire sequence, we're going to get four seconds to basically open our gear door, retract the gear, close the gear door. And you'll see how each one of those uh, different parts of the cycle works as we move into the next page. The next thing, uh, basically what we're doing is we are able to control 
two different channels and have those two channels sequence differently based on the operation of the you know whatever we have plugged into that channel in the receiver for this specific example when we get to like the names that's where we can rename this event that's associated with the first channel that we're using when it says name a door cycle we can change that if we want to you can highlight that you can change it to whatever you want i mean door cycle is fine for what we're doing so we're going to leave that alone but you could go in here and you could edit that name if you wanted to we're going to go ahead and hit the back button here and same for the uh, the b thing now this is what's going to show up in the channel monitor so if you want to customize what shows up for each one of those channels in the channel monitor that's going to be this section on the right so you've got the name of the event in the sequencer here and what it's going to be called in the channel monitor here and then these last two areas uh, where we've got channel a and channel b those are the channels on the receiver where we're going to have servos plugged in and what those are going to be associated with so channel b for our wheels that's going to be our retracts connected to the gear channel and in this specific example channel a is going to be aux 3 where we would be plugging in the servos that are going to open and close our gear doors. And then over here in the type, we have either step or propo or proportional. What that means is it's either going to happen immediately or it can happen over time. So step is more like a switch where it's either on or off and proportional means that we want it to move a specific amount through the sweep of the servo. For the gear door, we're going to change aux 3 to proportional because our gear doors are almost always going to be controlled by a servo. And for B, for our gear, we're going to leave that one on step because a lot of our electric retracts when you activate that retract, it's going to go through its cycle with an instant change and it's going to take some time to move those gears. And once it gets open, it stops responding. And just to be clear, in this example, on channel A, aux 3, we're going to be plugging in some servos to control our gear doors. So we're going to leave that on proportional. Channel B is going to be a set of electric retracts and we're going to leave those on step. We're going to go ahead and go down to next and that's where we're going to see our graph that basically tells our system what this is going to look like. Now to break down this graph for you, uh, what we have is time uh, along the bottom and we've got what's going to be happening with the channels and each one of these two graphs is broken down into different points so we have zero one two three and four and we also have horizontal and vertical sections of those graphs to kind of give us a visual representation of how the servo or the step is going to move during specific events based on to get from one point to the next uh, we can go from point one point two three uh, and four respectively now, I am not aware of a way to add more points to this. So this is basically what you get is uh, a five point system to set up your sequencer. And for each point, we can define uh, the, the time that that point is associated with, as well as a percentage of how far we want the particular servo to move from one point to the next. Right, so at point zero, we're gonna be at a time percentage of zero, and this is where I say the math comes in, right? And this is why we picked a four second sequencer timer. As soon as we flip the switch, whatever your positions are at point zero, after one second, whatever we set here, those items are going to move either proportionally or step at this point so at zero we've got both the door and the wheel at a hundred percent at step one we have the door at negative 100 percent and the gear is also set to negative 100 percent but because the wheel in this case uh, the retracts are set to step we're going to wait for that door to completely open and then we're going to step the retract at two we've still got both at negative 100 at three, we've got both at negative 100. And at four, we've still got the, re the retract at negative 100. 
and the door at plus 100. The way that this is going to work out, we are going to start our timer. So as soon as we flip our switch, the door is immediately going to start coming open. At point one, one second later, the door is going to be fully open and the retract is going to actuate. We're going to give the retract two seconds and then we're going to close that door. So that's what's happening on that upper graph. So let's walk through that as we go from one point to the next. We've got point zero. We're going to highlight that and we can just click the scroll wheel to select the point that we want. And as we go to point two, point two is 25 percent down the time. Uh, we can adjust the time. Say we want that to all happen at 10 percent of the sequencer time or we want it to happen at 45% of the sequencer time. We can adjust where those points sit on the timeline. And it's a percentage of the total uh, sequence time that we set on the previous page. So with this one being a four second timer, 25 second or 25% in is going to be one second. That's going to be our one second mark. And you would have to do that on your own. Uh, so if you have a set of retracts that takes 10 seconds to open, you'd obviously want to modify this a little bit and you'd need to do a little bit of math to figure out what percentage of your total sequence time you need these points to be uh, for the doors to fully open. So for the purposes of what we're doing, we're assuming that the door servo can fully move the door inside of a one second window that our retract only takes two seconds to move uh, to its full range of motion and that it only takes one second to close the door. Again, this is a very basic demonstration of how to use the sequencer. However, the same principles would apply for a longer sequence and you would just need to do a, a little bit of math to figure out what the times need to be for each one of these points and where those need to sit on the timeline. So let's go ahead and move now. So here's what we were saying before. At 25% or one second, we want the position of the door at that point to be negative 100. So we can see here that at point zero, it started at plus 100. It's gonna move to negative 100. And at the same time that it gets to negative 100, we're gonna sequence the retract from plus 100 to negative 100. We're not gonna see that until point two. Now the reason we don't see that until point two is because whatever we set for point one, the movement from zero to one happens at point zero or at the previous point. So say uh, at point two, we want the retract to come down. So because that starts at the beginning of this cycle from one to two, it actually moves the door at point one because it's a step, it's on and off, right? So from zero to one, we have no movement. From one to two, we want that movement. So at zero, everything is set the same. At one, everything is set the same. We wanted to actually move at one, so we will define that at point two. And because it starts that movement, at point one, it's immediate. So we set what we want point one to do at point two uh, when we're using a stepped event like this. And then as we go to point two, uh, that's where we can see uh, that shift where the wheel is now gonna be at negative 100. At point three, we're gonna see that they're the same. The only thing that changes is that time interval. And from three to four, so the same kind of principle applies. At step four, I want the door to go back to plus 100. I don't set that at point three to start that movement. Point three is where I want that movement to begin. So from three to four, that transition for the door is gonna go from negative 100 at point three to plus 100 at point four, which we'll see as we move to point four. So we've got time is 100, which is the last part of our cycle. And our door is now at plus 100, which means that it's gonna close that door. Now, what I want you to see here is I'm gonna flip the switch, all right? Now, between reverse and forward motion, so this is our reverse motion where, where the retracts are coming up. 
This is our forward motion where the retracts are coming down. Now you'll see this little arrow move across the bottom and it takes approximately four seconds to make its complete motion. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the switch to the down position. It will open the door, actuate the retract, and then close the door. When we're coming down, nothing has changed. We actually need this to be uh, altered for the gear to come down. I still want the door to open. That carrot is moving back in the other direction. Everything's going to shift and we can actually set different values here for the sequencer between forward and reverse. They're going to change. We're starting at point four now and working our way back in the other direction. So the gear doors, we're going to leave the same because it takes one second to open the doors, two seconds for the retracts to cycle. Right, right now our wheel is not going to go from negative 100, which is extended, to plus 100, which is retracted, until time one, which is no good. So what's going to happen if we leave it like this is that retract is going to start to move at the same time that the door is trying to close, uh, which is going to create some conflict. What we want to see is from point four, or yeah, point four here to point three, we don't want any movement on the door. Uh, we want the wheel to be at negative 100. Uh, when we're going in reverse, uh, all of the graphs still go from zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, right? So when we set up our step, if we want that step to happen at point three, uh, rather than setting it up at, uh, or yeah, it, rather than setting it up at point four, uh, we're actually gonna set it up at the prescribed time. So we want uh, at point three for our wheel to go ahead and start moving up. All right, and, and what you'll see is at point three, we're gonna see that wheel start moving up. We're gonna go ahead and move that to plus 100. All right, and don't worry too much about uh, what we're seeing in that second timeline right now. We're going to correct that. So once we get the wheel up um, at point three, we want all of the, the follow-on steps. So from three to two, two to one, one to zero, we want all of those to be at plus 100 as well. So we've got point four at negative 100, which is the retracts uh, all the way down. And then we're going to shift to plus 100 at point three, and we're going to stay at plus 100 for each step going past, uh, you know, going back in the other direction. So four is at negative 100, three is at 100. We want two to be at 100. And as we start to correct these, everything will start to look a little better. All right, so now that we've got all of our points uh, programmed for both forward and reverse, I want you to see as I go from uh, the gear down to gear up, so I change that position of switch A, I want you to kind of see how this works out. So this is my forward sequence, and this is now my reverse sequence. All right, so again, We've got, for the forward sequence, the door opens, the gear actuates, and the door closes. So we have the door opens in one second, the gear actuates instantly, we give it two seconds to complete its cycle, and then the door closes behind it. All right, in reverse, the door opens, the gear goes up, and then the door closes after two seconds. So you can see there how we've got a different sequence for forward than we do for reverse. So to kind of complete this and let you see what this looks like on the channel monitor, we're gonna go back out to the main page, right? So our event sequencer is now programmed and we're gonna go back out to our main dashboard and we're gonna click one click over on the menu and now we can see our channel monitor. Now what we're gonna see is the names have changed for the gear channel, so now the gear channel is named wheel, and aux3, uh, which is the channel we set for the gear door, is gonna be named door, D-O-R. And that is 
because we defined uh, those abbreviations in the sequencer. So it changes the name that you're going to see for those in the channel monitor. For the gear doors, 100 is going to be our closed position. And for the wheels, 100 is going to be our up position. So right now my gear is up and the door is closed. As I move the switch to drop the landing gear, I want you to watch that in the channel monitor and see how that works. So what we're going to see is the door is going to go from 100 to negative 100. And that's going to indicate that the door is open. All right. Once the door is completely open, our wheels are going to instantly shift from 100 to negative 100 because these are electric retracts. And at the end of the two second cycle, the doors are going to, over a one second time period, go back to the 100 position. So let's go ahead and see how that looks in the channel monitor. There we go, the doors. We instantly, yep, we instantly see the wheels move and then the door goes back closed. So let's go ahead and watch that uh, with the gear going up. We should see the door open. And then as soon as the door gets to its open position, about one second later, we're going to see the wheel channel go immediately to 100. So there goes the door. We go immediately to 100. Two seconds later, the door closes again. So fantastic. Our sequencer is doing exactly what we need it to do. And that's all there is to programming the sequencers in your Spectrum NX series radio. All right, guys, that's it for today's tutorial on the NX series transmitters. Uh, again, if you're looking to buy an NX series transmitter, please check our links in the description. Those are affiliate links that pay a small commission back to the channel, and we absolutely appreciate your support. And as always, for all the other things that you need to change your RC life, you can always go to rcairmarshall.com where you'll find affiliate links to all of our affiliate partners. If you have any questions on today's video, be sure to leave those down in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer those as soon as I get a chance. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on those notifications. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you in the next one.